is working. We, we got a whole other level. We, we operate at a level. We in the highlights. Come on, come on, y'all clap it in. We in the highlights. We not in the low life. We not in the world life. We in the highlights. Where the blood of Jesus has been shed for everybody. And I declare the name of Jesus. The blood is working. Oh, my God. Jesus. Now, 
Now, if you didn't die, if you didn't die in Christ Jesus, then you need to. <laughs> you, you, you need to you need you need to mimic what Jesus did. You died one time. Now you don't have to die no more. All right. Ain't that good news? Ain't that good news, bro? Right here with that good news. That's good news. That's good news. Glory to God. We just we just glad we just glad that God has fixed it that we don't have to do but one death, and that's in Christ. And we come back up. That's baptism. We come back up in Christ. Glory to God. Glory to God. Happy Father's Day to all of you all that are listening. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Somebody say all of the fathers, all of the, the biological fathers, all of the mentor fathers, all of the fathers that folks made you daddy. And as fathers as anybody that called you father, you don't even have to birth them. They just, just happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Still fathers, just, just fathers, fathers. Happy Father's Day to all of you all. Amen. And we just believe God that uh, that when we take time, as we take time to to uh, um, as we take time to uh, uh, just just reflect on this, I'm going to minister uh, as well. We thank God for all of you all that's coming on online on Facebook and in, in YouTube that's coming online with us and. Uh, Today I have the ability to see you as you come home, so I'm gonna. I'm, I thank God for all of you all, and uh, 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 especially uh, those of you all that are, are homebound and and can't get out. And uh, want to remind you that uh, we are open at Walk of Faith Church for business. <laughs> We're open for business now. What we do is we practice social distancing. And all the rules that they put out there, and all that we got, we, we we can even spray you down with an, 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 what they call that, and and if and accept it, like whatever. We can spray you down, clean you up. If you feel like you want that, you can <laughs> clean your hands, uh, disinfect it. It's disinfected. That's what you. We can spray you down with disinfectant. We can disinfect you or whatever. We you don't have to be scared. You you don't have to be scared. But if you are staying home. And then let me preach to you so that you can, that we can get rid of that fear. Because God did not give you, come on, the spirit of fear, Amen. but of love, power, and sound mind. Now, I'm not saying be crazy. Because, see, that's being religious. You know, you, you can either be religious and, and miss, miss all of the, the, you can miss it, being religious. And, and uh, there's a difference between faith, foolishness, and presumption. You, you all of these different things. So you don't want to do that. You want we want to walk by faith, amen. And we do walk by faith and not uh, by sight. We do walk by faith and not by sight. And so that's our faith declaration. Sometimes we fall short of that. Sometimes people fall short of that. We walk by sight and not by faith. But our faith declaration is what we walk by faith. And not by sight. That's our faith declaration. I say it again. Sometimes we fall short of it. And nothing wrong with you falling short. That's why. That's 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 what this is all about. That's why we have a father. Amen. That's why we do have a father. We're gonna talk a little bit about that today, uh, because I was I've been ministering and our ministry that, that that we've been ministering on falls right in line with that area. It falls right in line with that area that I've been ministering on. For a couple of Sundays, we've been talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and uh, and, and and so we, we talked about uh, several different things that uh, we need to deal with in the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to go there, but I'm going to uh, share with you several points that God, when you were born again, you were born again through a brand new realm, and as that in that brand new realm. That's something that you pray. He taught his disciples to begin to pray about this realm, this realm, this R-E-A-L-M, realm. This realm that we were going to live in. And he had the disciples to pray, our Father, which are the, what, what, I'm going to just say where you are. Our Father, our Father, you are in heaven. All right? And I hallow your name. In other words, I set aside your name because that's the name that that, that I'm, I'm actually submitting myself to. And what did you call him? You call him what? Father. 
So in that realm, God said, you first have to recognize a father. And then in that realm, he says, pray, thy kingdom do what? Come, and your will be done, where? On earth as it is in heaven. Is he talking about anything else other than within the realm of the Father? No. He said, he's not saying just because you got a job, just because you got this, just because you got that. He said, no, recognize him as the Father. Thy kingdom do what? The Father, your kingdom come upon earth as it is in heaven. I want to be able to treat you as Father on earth as it is in heaven. Now, you're going to find yourself, as the Bible says, as becoming sons of, uh, listen to this, God. Glory to God. So God actually wants you in his family. And he wanted you in his family. He wanted you in his family. So we're going to talk about how God set it up. That you can praise him and talk to him and deal with him in the family, and he's going to treat you as a father. Amen. That's why we talked about the infill and the Holy Spirit. He fixed it so that you won't be born of nothing else but him. He wants to infill you not only, not only that, he wants to see you be just like he. Somebody always say, yeah, he looks just like his dad. She, she look, he look, she look. They look just like they dad. Why? Because you're doing the things of God. You're doing the things that when they start saying it, they're not talking about how you look in your face. Because the Bible says that, that actually, uh, uh, when it's talking about that, the Bible says that you were made in his image and his likeness. But you remember that, that when he was done, when he did that, when he made man, man separated himself from the Father. And the way that he had separated himself from the Father was the words that he received. So listen, I'm going to show you how the words that you receive actually is the milk that he feeds. Y'all might want to write that down. The words that you receive from the Father is the milk that he feeds. The Bible says he is El Shaddai. He's the many-breasted one. That means that in him, is he's full of the breasts. You know what mothers do? Their, their breasts and, and how, how, how mothers feed their milk to their, their, their children. Well, the Bible says that you desire what he calls the sincere, listen to what he calls it, milk. Guess what the milk is? It's of the word of God. Yeah. All right? I'm sharing with you several things that we're going to touch on this, this morning. And so the word of God, we're finding out, actually is the milk. The word of God actually is the milk, all right? So we talked about how God wants to express himself in people by infilling them with the Holy Ghost. Now we remember Acts 1 and 8 says, and you will, what he says in Acts 1 and 8, but you, you shall do what? Power. You shall receive power. Come on. After what? After that, the Holy Ghost. All right, let's go back to Acts, Acts 1 and 5. Acts 1 and 5. Let's start there. Acts 1 and 5. And it says, John, for John truly baptized. In Acts 1 and 5, he says, for John truly baptized. What, how did he truly baptize? He baptized with water. Right, but but uh, you but you shall be listen to this. But you shall be baptized. Listen to this. Uh, you're gonna be baptized with the Holy Ghost. All right. You shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. Now now skip down to Act uh, John. Uh, skip down to Acts one and uh, eight. Acts one and eight. Look down in there. And it says, but ye shall what? Receive what? Power. Power. Amen. All right. So the spirit of the Father, the, the spirit of the Father actually, as the spirit of the Father, that spirit of the Father actually is now getting into born again men and women of God. We're going to see this is what happened uh, after, after, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon them, and, and he's telling them, after that, the Holy Ghost come upon you, there's going to be some things that's going to happen with you. Amen. All right? I want you to see this. 
You cannot be religious because you can miss out on the Father. All right? I'm, I'm going to say that again. There's a lot of people that's actually missing out on the relationship with the Father because they revoke the infilling of the Spirit. And because they revoke the infilling of the Spirit, it's going to be hard for them to live a successful Christian, Christ-like life upon this earth because they actually are pulling away from the actual birth of God in, on the inside of their life. What Jesus told them to pray, Father, come in. And the first place that he wants to come in on earth as it is in heaven is on the inside of us. And so he wants to feel us. And it actually changes your persona. And it changes who you are. Matter of fact, Peter and John, before this, were so, I call them jetted back, that they went back to their old ways when they found out that Jesus was gone. Because their power was actually, I'm with my big brother. Like, it was like, I'm with my big brother. Okay. So we bad. Yeah, we bad. We bad. We bad. And they thought that, that the folks, you know, they thought that the folks really won because they, they, they really weren't listening to what Jesus was saying. He said, I must leave here, but, but for three days, you know, I'm going to be gone. But, 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 but on third day, I'm coming back. And, uh, and so they weren't listening because Peter even said, ah, no, nah, no, nah, yeah, and, and, and going on, you know, talking like that. But then, but Jesus said, no, I, I got to go. Because the reason that I got to go is that so that when I leave, the Father is going to send his very own spirit, and he's going to be able to enter to everybody. Listen to what I'm saying. What I'm saying, you then will receive the spirit of the Father. Oh, glory to God. Jesus said, I got to go because y'all got to receive the spirit of the Father, so, so I must go. And so they still did not. They had never experienced this. They had never experienced this. So Peter and all of those other guys, they were praying, but then there still was kind of a, a flimsiness about themselves. I, I, I don't know, you know, that, 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 that we out here by ourselves. You know, you, you, Jesus pretty well just put them out there. He told he when, when he came, he came back and they saw him going up. He said, y'all stay there and wait on the promise of the Father. And they, they began to get a little bolder. Peter got up in, in, on the day of Pentecost. They got up, you know, up, up in this upper room, and they were praying. And the Bible says, and the Spirit came in as of a mighty rushing wind. And you talking about power. The Bible said you receive power. That's what we just read. You will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I, listen, say, say with me, I want everything that God has for me. See, it's important for us to say that. It's important for us to believe that. I want everything that God has for me. I want everything that God got for me, and I definitely want the Spirit of the Father. I want the Spirit of the Father in me, just like he promised. He promised the Spirit of the Father in me, and I want the Spirit, glory to God, of the Father. I want it down on the inside of me. Thank you, Lord, for the infilling. Hold on, we seek and we'll rest that. Thank you for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. And God, in, in, <laughs> God actually expresses Himself in the infilling, in His infilling of, a, of, of, of His Spirit down on the inside of you. Glory to God. He expresses himself down on the inside of you. Okay, all right. Glory to God. Are y'all still with me? So in the Ephesians, the fifth chapter, beginning at the first verse, he said, then he said, Be, don't, uh, Ephesians, the, Ephesians, the first, the uh, fifth chapter, and the first verse. And I'm just going to skip around. You might want to get these. He said, be ye therefore followers of God as, listen to this, because now you got the spirit of the Father. Then he says, be ye therefore, be ye therefore, as Ephesians 5 and 1, 
Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Follow God as dear children. Follow God as dear children. Follow God as dear children. Listen, I want you to hear this because this is so very important. Everything that God is, God wants you to be. Everything that God is, as the Father, he wants you to be. So the Bible says in Ephesians, the first chapter, follow God like little children. So I want, I want to be able to follow God as dear children. All right? Follow God as dear children. Listen to what it says. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And then look at look at verse number 18. Go just just just, just jump down to verse number 18. Alright? You because he goes down to all these different things. But in verse number 18, he says, and be not drunk. I, I wanted you to see that. Be not drunk with wine. Whereas as this is how he said it. It's in excess. Be not drunk with wine, where in an excess, but, see he's using this to be able to show you what he, he how he wants you to do. But be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the power, with the Father's Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit of the real family. The real family is from the kingdom of God. Be filled with his Spirit. All right? And this is how you do it. Verse number 19. This is how you do it. If you look at verse number 19, it's going to show you. Speaking, this is how you do it. You might want to online that first word. This is how you be filled with the Spirit. First word. What's that first word? Speaking. You got to talk. Be filled with the Spirit. Now I'm going to show you how to be filled with the Spirit. And here's where the enemy does not like it. He's afraid for you to talk. If you begin to talk from the realm of your daddy, from the realm of your father, from the realm of kingdom, I talked about it. This is where I started talking about Jesus talking in that realm where people couldn't understand. Jesus came around. He was talking in the realm of his daddy. And so he goes and he speaks to a dead man. Four days being dead. His daughter, his sister said, well, I know he's stinking up in there now. He dead. But it was Jesus who spoke when they first came to him and says, Lazarus, he dead. He found him dead. He died, Jesus. Two days. Jesus stayed two more days before he went to him. But Jesus said one word. It was what he said. His words. He was speaking a specific word from a specific area. And Jesus knew that death, listen, listen, listen. Y'all need to hear what I'm saying. When you are born again, you are born away from death. All of this stuff in this earth is on the mission to death, to die. Everything. Your clothes on the mission. Do you know your pretty clothes will die? I, I, listen, the chairs will die that you're sitting in. The things that you're dealing with will die. Your house will die. Everything got death on it. Depreciate your car. When you remember when it used to be new? If you got a new car. Do you remember when it used to be new? It's death on it. And that stuff is going to go down. It's going to go down. But, 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 but no, that's not with Christ. Because you speak life out of your mouth. And everything in, out of your mouth in the realm that you are is a getting up real. Glory to God. Amen. Did y'all hear what I said? Sickness and disease got to go because in the realm of the sick of the whole heaven and the most secure of God. Hey, 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 in that realm, excuse me, for those of you who don't understand that, in that realm, in that realm, that realm I'm talking about, in that realm that I'm speaking of, in that realm that God, God wants to give you a word, in that realm is life. Amen. Jesus said, I come that you might have life, then that more 
abundantly. The dead stuff, listen, live stuff is what's supposed to come out of your mouth. Dead stuff, glory to God, is what's upon this earth. But live stuff is what God gave you to bring life to stuff that's dead. Anything that God redeemed from death, you have a right to bring it back up to life. Oh, man, that, that, I, that, that'll make me jump up and preach right there. But I need to move on. I need to move on because I, I feel like jumping up and, and just preaching right there. But I got to move on. I got to teach. I got to teach about I got to teach. <laughs> I got to teach about this kingdom, this realm that God has put us in, glory to God. He says, and he says, speaking, come on. He says, speaking, verse number 19, he says, speaking to yourselves, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. You start off, come on, babies in Christ, babies in Christ, growing in Christ. You learn how to speak to yourself. Cousins and damnation. Is that right? Is that right? Do you speak to yourself? Cussings and damnations and 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna get them straight. I'm gonna tell them all the blah 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 blah. No, that's the opposite. And guess where that comes from? That's the mouth of the devil. And if he can get you talking that, he can get you to miss out on what God has in your mouth. Your life, your life, <laughs> your life. Listen, 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 listen. The word of God is milk to you when you're born again. You're just born again. The word of God becomes milk to you, and it grows you. Growing so that you can not only uh, drink milk, but but uh, later on that you can eat meat. All right. So the word of God becomes milk to you. So what you do is 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 how you get it. Listen to this. He says, speaking to yourselves. This is one way. So you start speaking to yourselves in songs, then in in uh, hymns, and what else? And spiritual. At that realm, spiritual songs. That's what you're doing. Singing and making melody in your heart. Amen. So you're singing and you're making melody in your heart. Glory to God. I'm singing. I'm singing and I'm making melody in my heart. Glory to God. I'm, ooh, I'm singing. I'm making melody. I, I, I'm speaking to myself. Amen. Glory to God. And guess what I'm doing? I'm drinking milk. I'm encouraging myself in the spirit and in, in the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Now I'm speaking. I'm talking in that realm. Glory to God. You know what you're gonna sing? You're gonna sing about how healed you are. You're going to sing uh, how I'm delivered you are. You're going to sing how the Bible says that you can lay hands. I shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You're going to sing about I will cast out in the devil in my way and victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told that old devil to get me behind me. Victory today is mine. You're going to sing these songs. You're going you're gonna to be excited about it. You're going to sing these songs and make a melody in your heart. Glory to God. You, 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 you're going to make me. <laughs> Anybody ever made melody in your heart? You ever sang it? You ever caught yourself, your, your heart singing, and you didn't even know your heart was singing? But all of a sudden, you just had, you just heard it, heard it. Well, the Bible says that you have to do this on a constant basis. You, you're singing, you're speaking to yourself, you're making melody, and 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 the, the Bible says you pray without ceasing. In other words, this is part of your praying. This is this is part of your being in feel, your infilling, and developing yourself in the infilling. Not only uh, that day. That, that you got filled with the Holy Ghost. You, you remember that day. It, it's not only that day, but uh, but but it is a continuous, uh, uh, you know, uh, infilling with the Holy Ghost. You know, it's a continuous uh, 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 going on and, and, and... Oh, oh, oh! You see? You see? You see? You see? You see? You see? Okay. 
Oh, all of a sudden we got. See, see, we scared some of these folks over here. We saw them here. Oh, no, that's what you need to be doing. You need to have this going on. You need to have it going on. You are clean through the word. You are clean through the word. 
So if this is how God cleans the church, instead of him being able to change your pamper and change your diaper and all of that, God gives you a different way in his realm. This is how you're clean. You clean through the word. Even if you, as a child, speak in the wrong words, God gives you his word to clean you back up. Amen. So even though Peter did all what he did, Jesus kept Peter. He didn't know Peter away because he spoke the word. He just told him, those words are of the devil. Come on here, Peter. Because I say that you are rock. What? How did he end up telling him? And upon this rock, this is how I'm going to build my church. The grace of God was so that he never got up on Peter about what he did wrong. He always blessed him about what he did right. That's the love of a father. The grace of a father. The graciousness of a father. The Bible says, you are clean through the word which I've spoken to you. And listen to what he says in the next verse. He says, so what I'm going to tell you to do is this. He says in verse number four, abide or live in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear forth fruit of its own self. Except, this is how it bears fruit, except it abides in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide. Listen, if you live in me, you live it in me through the word. All right. So verse number five, and this is what he said. Because so he, if, if I need to explain this to you, this is what you need to do for explanation. In verse number five, I am the vine. Mm -hmm. You are the branches. He that lives in me and I in him, the same bringing forth, this is what I call it, much fruit. Amen. This is what this is what Jesus called it. Much fruit. For without me, without me, you can do no thing. All right? So God is calling us to reverence his word. All right? He's calling us to reverence the word so much that we can be possessed yeah. Y'all ever seen, uh, uh, I know we, we know about it over here, but a lot of people don't know about demon possession and how demons have possess, can easily come in and possess. You know how, how you know that they possess? It's about the words that they speak. What they say out of their mouth. That's why in the infilling of the Holy Ghost, the first thing that happens to you is that you begin to speak in the language of the realm that you got the Father in. You're speaking that language upon this earth because the Father wants to speak. The Bible says that you, you, you speak it in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the Father wants to speak through you. So he wants to possess you so that you can say his words. Mm -hmm. And in this life, the first possession is that now I got your tongue. Because you could, you've been saying whatever you want to say. But at this point, I want you to be able to speak in my tongue. That now that you'll be able to uh, build yourself up in your most holy faith, you can uh, be able to uh, pray a perfect prayer when your mind won't let you. You can just reach down into your spirit. And not only that, you will have exercised yourself in your spirit because the Bible says in Proverbs 20 and 27 that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. So he wants you to exercise yourself in that place where the candle of the Lord is so that when you are able to speak in your language, you are speaking your language to dominate the realm that you're living in. That's the power. You receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come up on you and in you and filled you. And so now, God is exercising within himself, himself, 
And now you got the spirit of the Father. That's why you can go in places where people are having a really hard time living for the Lord when they preach against or speak against or being taught against being filled with the spirit of God. Just coming down and shaking a preacher's hand does not qualify you. Just because they put your name on the roll in the church does not qualify you. Just because you're doing good, like a, like a deacon say, man, it, it, I, I ain't what I used to be. I mean, you know, I, I'm glad I ain't, however he said, you know, they say something about, I'm glad, you know, in other words, I've just been, I'm, I'm a little gooder than I was before. God doesn't bring you in because how good you are. And some people think that they can go to heaven because how good you are. You can be good and good and good and still re and, and, and still refusing to turn toward Christ. Just because you got good, you can't get good enough for Christ. You got to just turn and, and, and it, it's simple. Just turn and, and accept the blood of Jesus Christ for your life. Now, you now you want after you did that, now you want to learn how to be good after you accept the blood of Jesus Christ. Now you want to learn how to do better because you want to do that. So be filled with the Spirit. And that's how you're able to separate those other things because you got power after that Spirit has come upon you. So now you got power after the Spirit has come upon you. Now situations and things that you're going through, they are not as hard. They are challenging. Your situations are challenging because you're always, in your mind, you always have situations, but you'll get better and better and better being able to handle them because now you're going to grow, you're going to grow by the milk of the word, and you ain't not going to always eat to drink the milk, but now you're going to learn how to eat the chicken of the word or eat the steak of the word. So Y'all understand what I'm saying. It, you know, people don't have to chop it up down and, and, and grind it up just to give it to you. you now you're going to learn how to eat more and more of the word of God, and before long, you're going to see powerful things happening in your life. That's how you, you, you grow. You grow like a baby, like children. But you remember the Bible says in Ephesians, you don't want to be just children tossed to and fro. Grow, you know, you want to grow thereby. Grow by the word of God. Amen. So God wants us to be possessed by the word. Amen. All right. That he wants us to be possessed uh, by the spirit of the father. All right. Now, in order to do that, we got to get rid of the spirit that called, I want to be in charge. Did y'all hear what I said? You might want to write that down. You want to be in a con, 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 con Connect with yourself to make sure that you don't have a spirit of, I want to be in charge. Because up until that point, guess what? You were in charge. You ran everything. You thought that you ran everything. Uh, other folks let you think that you ran everything. <laughs> and, and so especially if you got this forceful thing about yourself, you, you, don't, you don't. No, no. You have to learn how to not be in charge. Amen. You have to learn how to trust. In the Lord, trust in the Lord. You're going to have to learn. You have to learn how to continuously trust in God, all right, and not be in, in charge, you know. <clears throat> being, being possessed by the Spirit of God allows you to trust uh, uh, whatever the Spirit of God is doing in your life or whatever he's saying. Jesus taught his disciples. Uh, this this is how he taught disciples before they got the infilling. That he he just taught them. He was te te teaching them trust. So he when he sent them out, you remember he sent the seventy out. You remember he sent them out in his name. He said, "Don't take nothing. Don't 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 try to don't try to write your speech." Now that that's not what he taught them. That is not what he's saying to these pastors. Pastors, pastors y'all need to study this word to show yourself approved. A workman need not be ashamed. But Jesus was showing them how to trust. So he blew on them his breath, the spirit, and he sent them out. And he said, as you go out, don't try to write what you're going to say, but there's going to be words that's going to come to you just as you go. As, as, you, as you begin to talk, the word is the right word for God. They came back so excited because devils, devils heard 
for the first time words from the kingdom. See, when Jesus spoke, Jesus was speaking from the kingdom. They obeyed Jesus, so they, they, they got rid of their own, I'm in charge. They just did what Jesus said. I'm going to do what he said. That's how you, that's, that's the power of the word in your life. I'm just going to do what the Bible says. Amen. And that is so powerful. Because when you do what the kingdom says, then you are yielding to the kingdom. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And you are yielding to the power of God. You are yielding to what God has to say to you. So I'm just doing what God said. That, that, that's, that's what you have to do. And so that's what those disciples, and when they came back, they said, oh, devil's in the world. Running out them folks. You think we just saw powerful things happen. Jesus said, thank God that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That, that's what y'all need to be excited about. And so they were. They were excited. Uh, uh, they, they were excited, and they, they uh, were excited about being written into the Lamb's Book of Life. But bless the Lord, bless the Lord that God was able to use them even before they were actually infilled, infilled with the Holy Spirit. This was before they infilled it. They just obeyed what Jesus said. These guys actually had not given their life to Christ. They just had to learn by faith to trust in Jesus. Do you know these were the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Nobody got saved. Pastor Johnson, yeah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, nobody got saved. Nobody got saved. All of the miracles and things that you that that that, that you see, that was pre Jesus shed his blood. That was before Jesus even shed his blood. But their faith was in the word of God. And Jesus was teaching them through the faith of the word of God. And even Jesus, when he did that, that's when you saw the miracles of God. Listen. The miracles of God, y'all might want to write this down. The miracles of God, the wonders of God, the power of God is an expression of the kingdom that you are walking into. The miracles is a mere expression of his kingdom. The miracles of God, the power of God, the wonders that they talk about. They are not miracles in, in, in power and wonders to Jesus. They're not miracles to Jesus. That's just the regular expression of the kingdom of God that you are born into. I'm going to say that one more time. I'm going to say that one more time. The miracles of God. The wonders of God. Glory to God. The power of God. are the expressions of the kingdom of God. They are not miracles to Jesus. They were not wonders to Jesus. They were the regular way of doing things in that realm that Jesus has now borne us into. And when we get to that point, that there are no more miracles, it's just the regular expression of the kingdom, is when you will see that people will say, these people look just like they die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, happy Father's Day to all of you all. I'm going to continue this teaching. I'm going to continue this teaching about, because I, I wanted to talk about uh, uh, specifically all of the fathers. And uh, I want to be able to be a blessing to all of you all. And today, our, our uh, uh, actual, uh, what we call our actual uh, celebration of Father's Day is celebration of our Father's Day. Amen. And we thank God for all of you all that have joined us. And uh, I see that many of you all have joined us. And God bless you all for uh, coming on. And happy Father's Day to all of you all, uh, specifically. Uh, uh, those of you, some of some people that, that have not joined even by live, but that will be joining us as well, I, I say to you that uh, the blood of Jesus was shed for you so that you can be a part of this wonderful uh, move of God in your life. 
and that you can call him your father. So God bless you, each and every one of you. Amen. And remember this, that the blood of Jesus, his blood still works. Amen. Glory to God. Just remember, our giving is uh, here on that. Cash app us as walk faith. The two words, walk in faith, that's dollar sign, walk faith, that's cash app. And uh, also, you can go online to our moundbyourchurch.com. That's, that's moundbyourchurch.com. And give online. Or you can text us. Now, you want to text us? The number is 45777. That's all. Text the, the number to the number 45777, and this is what you put in the text. You put the words, walk up faith, in that text. And after you do that, it'll tell you what to do. So that's how you give. And uh, we are giving here at the Walk of Faith as well, so that the anointing will continuously flow. You are now contributing and seeding into a powerful ministry. So God bless you. I pray for you right now to be filled with the Spirit of God. And the anointing of God will be upon your life forever. Let the anointing flow.